Hey guys and welcome back to another Katia V5 tutorial. Today is following on from the 3D workbench tutorials and uh, today we're going to be going through 2D wireframe and surfacing tutorials. So I'll be going through the basics of the workbench itself, showing you um, some basic operations, but then I'll start to show you how to do your own uh, wing surface geometry using the workbench itself and also imported data from Excel. So currently I'm, uh, I'm in the part workbench here, uh, as you can see from the right. So to get into the surfaces workbench, you're just going to start, shape, and I'm using generative, generative shape design. And uh, generally this is the platform that is most used in aerospace applications as well, and it's the one I'm most familiar with, so I'll be taking you through this one. So the workbench itself, exactly the same as uh, part design in 3D form. Only the toolbars are completely different, like we said, but you've still got the same functions such as sketch, uh, including position sketch as well, which you can do. So you can still uh, pop in, position yourself for sketch, like so, and pop out again with no problem at all. And that is your sketch there. The only difference is now is that some of your options on, um, for example, your wireframe, such as points, lines, and planes, you have a few more options in which you can create stuff. And that's within the 3D environment as well. So basic operations, which I'll show you today before going on to uh, more complex stuff. So extrude, for example, you've got exactly the same uh, layout almost as 3D, i.e. you can pad stuff, or also known as extrude, and revolve stuff, known as revolve. Um, or w would be putting a, a shaft in. Uh, the only difference is, of course, is that it's 2D. So simplest pie, you can create something and create a shape like that. And because it's 2D, it's it's much easier to create complex shape, complex shapes. So extrude is a very basic one. So I can create um, a shape like that. I can then revolve it uh, using exactly the same ways as you do it in 3D, and you choose a uh, revolution axis and you've already got um, half of what looks like a vase, I suppose. You can, uh, but what you can also start to do is you can create geometry from these surfaces. So I can do, for example, uh, an intersection. So when it, what an intersection means is that you choose two elements uh, to, to intersect, and whatever intersects, Katia will create geometry there for you, which is, which is the inter intersection itself. So if I show you, if I choose this shape here and the plane um, X and Y here, press preview, it will create a line, which is the intersection of those two elements. Now, if I have a, if I have a line going through it, straight through it, it will create a point, for example. So that's the kind of things you can create. And it's very, very useful uh, because you can create a lot more geometry that way from existing geometry. And that's really how generative shape design and GSD feeds into then part design using what you can create in this workbench to then go into part and create it in a 3D model. You've also got uh, other, other options such as an offset so you can take any surface that you have currently and you can offset it. Now what I will just warn you here is that offsetting a surface can uh, it can be a good thing like this, so you can offset it as it goes. If you do it too much, you might get an error such as this. And that basically means that the mathematics of, of extrapolating that, offsetting it, is, is just too much. It, it, you, it can't be done. But it can be done up to, you know, for example, depending on how complex your part is, uh, you can offset it at different amounts. But just be wary that you can't always do it to infinite amounts. You've also got things like sweep fill and multi-section solid. Now these are more um, more complex uh, items which I'll get onto a bit later when we're doing wing design. But another one which I'll just uh, point you towards before we go on to uh, the actual wing design itself is extrapolate, which is a very, very useful tool in terms that what you can do is you can take a boundary and what boundary means in anything in GSD is a line. I.e. if you've got a surface, the outside line, the black line is its boundary. If you see any boundary, you can then extrapolate it by clicking on the surface. So what it will do, what Katia will do, is that it will, it will basically follow that shape and it will keep doing it. So if I chose, for example, let's say 100mm, 
you see it has it's still it, it's producing a, a surface which is a continuation of this one now it won't keep on doing it so it's um it, it follows this entire shape it will just take the mean of what it sees here as where it's going to go rather than what it's been done but that can be again a very very useful tool to create something that is um, t to add on to something that's already been created okay so those are the real basics of the 2d workbench um, you can do a lot with them to be fair and create a, quite a bit of different surfaces but uh, what I would say is they work much like the 3d modeling way of doing pads and shafts and things like that you can do different directions of extruding so go away and have maybe a bit of a play with it if you want to uh, now, because my, my expertise work is mainly in aerospace, I'm going to show you guys how to create a wing surface profile. Uh, and to do that, what you'll need first is the profile or the aerofoil itself. The uh, best way you can do that is to go to a website called uh, airfoiltools.com. It's a great little website. Um, like you said, it's got 1,600 airfoils here. And each airfoil will come with its own set of coefficients, such as CL, CL over CD, CL, um, CM over alpha. Um, all of these, if you wish to be explained, can be explained in a further video. Uh, but you get the shape here, and you get a set of points which are uh, just from 1 to 0, which you can then um, factor up to create different size aerofoils. So you can copy this and put it into an Excel spreadsheet, which you then import it into Katia. So that spreadsheet you can find again online um, in this uh, this link here. Both links to these websites will be put in the description below. So all you'll do is download it, you'll get the actual website, and uh, it, it even comes with a little how-to manual. It's quite a simple process. So I've got that set up at the moment. So here's here's mine. I have changed it about a little bit. Um, so I've got a little button, and I've got, um, here are my actual coordinates for, for my airfoil, and here are the coordinates going in. So by factoring these up, uh, you can create different shaped airfoils at different locations because it imports it or exports it uh, as an X, Y and Z coordinate. So if you want to create it along the span of the wing, all you've got to do is at the moment, like for example, it's at zero, i.e. the very, very beginning of the wing. If I'd put that up to maybe, let's say, 10, 10,000, uh, it would go to the very, very tip of the wing. So each time you bring these in, remember it's going to be in the base unit of your Katia, um, how, you how your Katia is set up. So if it's uh, metric, it's going to be in millimetres. If it's imperial, it'll be inches. What I will then say is, all you've got to do is click export, and it'll export it straight into the Katia workbench. So, uh, oh, lost it. Click export. It'll ask you for um, if you want to do one for points, two for points and splines, uh, or three for points, splines, and loft. Now, generally, I find that the points and splines doesn't work very well, uh, and points, splines, and loft is never usually needed. So I normally go for one, which is just the points, and link them up afterwards. So there we go. So that's brought an aerofoil into the actual uh, into our workbench with the points. Now, all we've got to do then is just link them all up with the spline, uh, and then we can go from there to create our line. Now. When we're creating a wing, we can do one of two things, really. We can create a really simple one, which will then create it in a way uh, which is just a normal flat shape. Or we can create maybe a, uh, a more, more complicated one with different size um, shapes of the, of the aerofoil, as well as uh, maybe sweep back and taper. So this is the one I'm going to show you. So I'm gonna, just going to go and grab um, some more aerofoil shapes, and I'll be back in a second. So now I've got uh, three different aerofoil shapes. So I've got two that are quite large and one that is quite small. So I've got the, um, the innermost aerofoil and then the outermost with an intermediate one here. So if, just if you're wondering the way I did that. So um, what I did is when I imported it, um, like I said, I've got this set up so it does it automatically for me. You do X, Y, Z, so you just choose which one you're gonna put um, for, for the span, for example five meters put that in for everything and it'll put it that in it, that span there for example um, just watch because what it will do is it'll keep it in the same place so if you want to move everything back you might want to displace it by a certain amount so because uh, the tip cord is uh, half of the the root cord what I did is I had to 
it is to uh, displace it back along the x-axis by 1000 to keep the trailing edge of it in line with everything else. So what we end up with are three aerofoils which are nicely uh, nicely lined up as you can kind of see. So first things first there, what we do is we create uh, these points into, into lines. Now I find the best way to do that is to uh, join them up with a spline. So on the wireframe tool here, we've got the spline function. Um, uh, it's different to the one as you have in the sketcher because you need a series of points to actually um, to actually do it. So um, what I will do is is it's not as gruesome as it sounds. You don't have to select every point uh, individually. What you can do is you can click first, and then you can click a second, and then where it, it allows you to, you can click and drag. Um, and it will it will link them up automatically. So if you get it to, to a nice flat shape, what you can do is you can end up just putting these in really quite quickly, like so. Okay, so that's it. That's our aerofoil. So you will notice that. Um, it's it's not joined at the uh, at the tip, which is fine. You can join that later. But that is your aerofoil shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the other th other two now. Uh, press OK. All you need to do then is is just click on the other two, sort the other two out, and do them as well. So those are those are our profiles now done for our aerofoils. So what I've done is I've created a a brand new geometrical set by going insert geometrical set. Uh, and I've done that just to make sure that keeping it nice and clean and easily organized. So to create our wing surface, we will use uh, a multi-section surface icon over in the surfaces toolbar. So you open this up uh, and what it's doing is, like it says, you just use multiple s uh, sections in order to create um, your surface. Now, when you're creating a multiple section surface, just be very wary of these, li uh, these arrows. What these arrows do is they determine what direction Katia sees the, um, the profile. So at the moment it's going around that way. If you need to preview it, it makes it lovely. It's done, sorted. If you swap these around, it won't make it. Now what this does is Katia, it's very, very complicated in the way it does it. It's much easier to see it if you can get it see it done properly. But you can use that to your benefit if you want to use, for example, like uh, a cone. You can create it that way. And what it Katia does, it tries to almost uh, link this way around to that way around, if you see what I'm trying to say. It's very difficult, but just make sure that when you're creating something as simple as this, those two are going in the same direction. So I'll add my third section, arrows are going in the right direction, press preview, and there is our surface. Quite easy, really. Now you'll see the Katia has made um, its own its own guide in this case. So what it's done, it hasn't gone straight from there and then a sharp edge straight to there. It's kind of blended it in. And that's what Katia will do naturally. It'll always try and find a nice, easy solution uh, to, from one section to the other. But if you want to control this a bit better, uh, you can add what's known as a guide in. So you've got guides here and you've got spines as well. Guides are very, very uh, specific. So when you are creating a, uh, a surface, it ha the surface will conform to that guide no matter what you do as long as it's actually solvable. So it will conform to that guide and it will not uh, go away from it. A spine on the other hand is a more generalized uh, direction so if, if you put it in a, a direction it will try and follow that direction as much as it possibly can in order to get to, to where it's going. So you can see that's how it, uh, how it goes in this case. If I were to create a line, uh, a guide for the front, to show you how to do. The way you can do that is you can press the uh, the line line button. You select your two points in the three D environment. Okay, create another one. So there's our two lines. So that will that will form our guide. Now, when we have a guide, it has to be a single entity. So we've got two lines at the moment. We can't have that. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the join function, and the join function will take two entities or more entities that I want and it will attach them together to create a single entity known as a join. That join could be anything from surfaces to, I said lines, 
but it has to what it will do is it will join it up if there's a gap between them it can solve to, to close the gap but i would generally make sure if you can to um to have them close and touching so click okay there we go you'll see here what it's done is when it, if you double click it and press preview it will show you where the boundary is which is always good so that's our guide curve we go back to our multi-section surface we select it again press preview so without the guide we get that look now if we add a guide in press preview there we go that's our that's our set uh, our surface now you can see to actually kind of counteract this what it's done is it's in a bulge at the back that's not a problem at all add another guide you can do as many as you like Okay, so what I've gone away and done is I've created two more uh, sets of lines and I've created two more joins. You'll notice that each time you make a join, it will hide the original entities that was made from it. So I'm going to go back to the uh, multi-section work, uh, section surface workbench, and I'm going to recreate this using these guide curves here. So like I said, without guide curves, you get that. Oops. With the first guide curve, you get this. Uh, and with the other two, which I'll choose from the tree, you get that. So that's a much more controlled uh, way of making something. And you'll also notice that doing this, you've actually uh, what we've done is we've actually incorporated a bit more of the wireframe, and you can see how everything kind of links together. So press OK, and there we have it. That is our surface. So I can now get rid of the virtual profile, and I've got a wing surface, which is very much. Uh, what, what our intended purposes are. Now that's just the wing profile. So what we can do now is we can use this profile to create internal geometry which will then allow us to you to, to build specific components. So this is great and all but we need to, to fill it with stuff i.e. spars, stringers, ribs, things like that. And this is the this is where you start. So in my in future we will be going through um, another series in which I go through the, the how to make all of the actual components of these but to start off with I'm going to just show you how to use uh, Emmet Geometry for it. So I'm going to leave it there for now so hopefully you'll be able to create your own wing surfaces uh, if need be and not just wing surfaces anything that requires a multiple section uh, so I'm going to leave it there for now and what I'll do is in the next uh, part of this is I will start to show you how to create the internal surface uh, reference geometry such as spars, ribs, uh, and I'll also be going through a bit more complicated stuff such as the string, uh, the sweep functions, fills, blends, um, and things like split and everything else. So please do come back and uh, have a look at that. If you do have any questions or comments on anything I've uh, mentioned during this video, please do uh, leave a comment or question below and I'll try and get back to you. Um, yeah, I hope you've learned something. So thanks for watching. Cheerio.